Good afternoon. The whole world, at least the whole political world, is captivated by the accusation of one, a Dr. Ford, Paisley Ford, who is a world-renowned psychotherapist or psychologist, written many, many books on subjects of psychology, a real credible person who has accused Brett Kavanaugh, a phenomenal judge with a stellar reputation of indecency, of attacking her when she was a child, when she was 15, when he was 17. Now ordinarily, one would just shoo this away. This happened 36 years ago, my God. You're both adults now. She's a highly successful professor in college, highly respected. He's a highly respected juror. Get on with your life. She claims that this has been so traumatic. This has hurt her in a way that's so profound she can't forget about it and she doesn't think he's the kind of person you would want to be a judge because he's capable of attacking a person for no reason or because he wants to, because he enjoys it. He's also cruel. That doesn't show, but he's the way he treated her was with cruelty. He laughed about it. He felt it was funny. Having been a young boy myself, I know that young boys are capable of doing things that are naughty. And young boys try to get away with things that they shouldn't get away with. And sometimes they hurt people that they shouldn't have hurt. Sometimes they get hurt themselves. That's part of the process of growing up. Why is this event so important? The event is so important because, not because it happened 36 years ago, but rather, Brett Kavanaugh, if he did this, has never asked forgiveness. And since he never asked forgiveness, he can't be forgiven. And if a person considers themselves perfect, and never has to ask forgiveness. And that is a person who has a problem with his conscience, a problem with his reasoning. And that's the argument presented by Dr. Ford. The other side of it is Brett Kavanaugh says it never happened. Doesn't understand when this could have happened. And he's, this is inconsistent with his behavior. And there's no corroboration of this. It's not even he said, she said, because there is no body who's willing to put Brett Kavanaugh together with uh, Susan Paisley at a party 36 years ago. So that's the problem. The problem is there's no corroboration, so why should this be an issue? The answer is she comes across very sincere, and she's believable, and she's emotional. Having sat on a court for conversion, it's called Geras in, in Hebrew, for over 40 years, I can tell you that there are people who can lie with a straight face and cry and show emotion and everything they say is a lie from beginning to end. And you believe them because of the power of the, the emotion that they emote. And it's not just myself who's been convinced. We're a panel of three. We're, we were a panel of three or four judges each one of us dealing with people public for many, many years, having experience with all kinds of people, 
And nonetheless, we have been convinced and hoodwinked by crying women who've convinced us that they mean something sincerely. It really is true. And every word that came out of their mouths was a lie. It's a fact. So don't tell me somebody's a credible witness and base your character assassination based primarily because she's so vulnerable. She cries so sincerely. That's not the criteria by which you judge a case. There is no corroboration. There are too many holes in Dr. Ford's memory, too many opportunities for one to raise a question that perhaps it was someone else, despite her insistences. People sublimate certain things, have certain things put into the back of their minds because they want it to be that way. Doesn't mean it's true, but that's what happens with people. And even if it were true, at least in her mind, you have to prove it on, Doc, on, on Brett Kavanaugh, whose total persona for the last 30 years professionally has only been on the highest level, the highest caliber. People who know him say it's inconsistent. It's not the way he is. Maybe he was a little boy and got caught up with his hormones, but that's not who he is today. He's been observed for 30 years in the public eye. He worked in the White House. He worked as a judge. He's been a, an appellate judge for the last, I don't know how many years, the highest, one of the highest courts in the land. So you cannot convict a person based upon somebody say so. And it doesn't make a difference how emotional and how sincere the other person says. You have to have corroborating evidence. But that's not the reason I don't believe Susan Ford. I don't believe Susan Ford's whole story of emotional trauma. I don't believe her story of destroyed relationships. I don't believe her phobias. They have been dismantled somewhat anyway. The reason she had a second door in her house has nothing to do with her fear of being enclosed. It has to do with the fact that she had a business in her home. And she also rented that room to some students, had some extra money. Fear of flying? Nonsense. She flew with her boyfriends all over the world in the, in the 90s. That's 25, 26 years ago. She's been, fly, she's been flying all over the world. Then now she all of a sudden is afraid of flying? Baloney. All of that is not true. But there's another fact that is elusive here that's not being talked about. She had a therapy session. To a certain degree, rabbis are also therapists, but there's a halacha from the Torah. There's a law in the Torah. If somebody did something to you and hurt you, and you can't forgive that person, you must confront him and ask him, why did you do this to me? Didn't you know how hurtful this was? And allow the person to ask forgiveness. Why in 2012, before he was put up to being a possible justice on the Supreme Court, why didn't you, Dr. Susan Ford, go confront him? You're a major professor in a major university. You've written 30 books or 40 books, maybe more, hundreds of articles. You're an accomplished person. You're married. you got children. You're still worried about this. You're still traumatized by this. Go confront him, for God's sakes. Oh, you can't confront him. What, is he a bear? 
What is he going to do to you? He's going to shoot you? Bring your husband. Bring your boyfriend. Bring somebody with a baseball bat. Why didn't you go down to the court where he presides and say, Dr. Kavanaugh or Brett Kavanaugh, I'd like a word with you. And he would be congenial, say yes. What is it? Do you remember that party 30 years ago? You know, you messed up my life for 10 years. I want you to know how badly that affected me. Did you ever think about how you hurt someone by doing what you did? And Brett Kavanaugh would have had the opportunity to say, Susan, I'm sorry, or I'm sorry that you think this happened with me. It never happened. So you would either know that the person doesn't want to ask forgiveness or the person's asked for forgiveness. And if he asked for forgiveness, you'd have closure. Why wasn't that part of the therapy suggestion? The Torah is the greatest therapist, written by God Almighty himself. And the Torah says if you have something against someone, you must confront that person. And you don't wait 30 years. You do it before Yom Kippur. Why didn't she go when she was in high school? Why didn't she confront him at his high school graduation or his college graduation? Why didn't she confront him at his fraternity in Yale and embarrass him there? Why didn't she confront him when he was working in the White House? The answer is either it didn't happen or it did not affect her as deeply. And if it truly affected her that deeply and she didn't confront him, then my conclusion is it didn't happen with him. It happened with someone else whom she now has sublimated to be Brett Kavanaugh. I have no other explanation for this. If you are a person who tries to be healthy and you teach people to be healthy and you have a therapist who's trying to make you healthy and working things out with you, why wouldn't this be part of the therapy? Confronting your tormentor who's now an adult and should know better. And that would give you closure. So either it didn't bother you that much or it didn't happen. In either case, the case against Kavanaugh is closed.